Holmes, for heaven's sake, whatever's going on? Oh, hello, Watson. You're early. Did you kill all of your patients? What? Holmes, where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. Ridiculous and dangerous. They're domestic bees. Apis mellifera. Such industrious workers. Anyway, Watson, I am sorry, but I must leave you. I'm in rather a hurry. You have a new case? Yes, but nothing as thrilling as this experiment. A theft of plants at the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew. I'm helping a minister who's an old friend of mine. You can join me if you like. Well, I'll admit that I'd far rather accompany you than remain alone here with these workers of yours. Besides, you'll need a helping hand with the flowers you're intending to bring back. Watson, however did you guess? For the great Sherlock Holmes to bother with the theft of plants. Come on. Admit that you're planning to spoil your little bees with some rare pollens. <laughs> Since when did I become so transparent? Let us go. Well, Holmes, here we are at the Royal Botanic Gardens. There's no doubt that this place is beautiful, but are you really intent on investigating the theft of the plants? Yes, of course. Don't touch anything else, is that clear? Just go and get a bucket of fertilizer, and without turning it over this time, Good day to you, gentlemen. How may I help you? If you are here for a visit, please do come back on Sunday. I am afraid that it cannot wait. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. We are investigating the theft of plants that took place here five days ago. A remarkable collection, I believe. So you're the one in charge, eh? A small favor for a friend. Now to whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? I am Martin Hamish. I am the Deputy Director of Kew Gardens, and that fellow yonder is Albert. He works here. I am delighted to meet you. What can you tell us about the plants? They were rare and exceptional plants. We presented them at our last exhibition. We haven't removed the stand yet. It is still in the large glass house. We only learned of their disappearance the evening after the exhibition, and nobody saw anything. No doors were forced? No. But I would imagine that for a thief it would be fairly easy to gain entry, for there are no guards here. Well, if you don't mind, we will take a look. Now, you say that it is in the large glass house. Yes, the one just behind me. Just a second, since Albert has nothing else to do. Albert, show these gentlemen where the exhibition was held. How many people work here? Only myself, but occasionally two students, Albert, whom you have met, and Miss White. Here it is. This is the place where the stolen plants were exhibited. Thank you. Is there something the matter? Yes, there is. All right, the plants were valuable and rare, but it seems to me that the tragedy that took place here only two days ago has been entirely forgotten already. What tragedy are you referring to? My... the director of Kew Gardens, Mr. Montague Dunn. He died here just two days ago. We're very sorry. We were not aware. The two of you were good friends? He... He was my father. Oh dear, our condolences. We should not be troubling you. Please do excuse us for the intrusion. You say that he died here, in the large glass house? Holmes? Yes, just here, near the door to the colonial collection. He suffered a heart attack, just like that, so suddenly. It was terrible. Excuse me, gentlemen, but I cannot remain here. If you need me, I'll be in the reserve. That's the room next to the front of the large greenhouse. 
Of course, we understand. Do not touch. The plants were here. All of them were stolen. Do Here is a list of the stolen plants. According to Albert, this is where his father, Montague Dunn, was found dead. The traces are thinner in some places. These boot marks are fresh. It appears as though someone was dragging their feet. The footprints reveal that someone staggered here. The door was smashed at shoulder height. This door handle is new. It was recently changed. Soil. It should have come from a flower pot. The soil on the side of this flower shelf is the same as that on the ground. Fragments of a flower pot. It fell down here. The esconson was breached near the handle. The door was forced from the inside of the colonial collection room. The handle was changed afterwards. I think we need to inspect the colonial collection. These plants come from all the territories of the British Empire. According to this, they have... Very strange. The smell is strong. It is... These windows were perfectly cleaned. This broken fragment. A fragment of marble, most likely chipped from a statue or skin. Part of this greenhouse was emptied and thoroughly cleaned. This is one of the outlets of the ventilation system. This pot was broken fairly recently. A flower pot recently fell down from these shelves and was misplaced. These trees with their roots in water must originate from Louisiana. These flower pots are beautiful. They are intended to be used for exhibition purposes. The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. There is a smell of burning. protective mask. Someone set it alight, but it did not burn. A door handle? Why would anyone throw such a thing in the fire? The door handle to the colonial collection and that of the fireplace are made of the same material. A broom handle was half burned. The remains of a picture frame. The symbol is not from Kew Gardens. The plants were set alight fairly recently. What should we do?
nursery, nurse, colonial, seed, ventilation, dry, water lit, harm, director's office, reserve. A water tank. A ventilation system. It. A ventil. Locked. Locked. Can I help you, gentlemen? The court. Hmm. Uh, do you work here? Yes, but part-time only. For I'm also studying botany at the University of London. You're following in your father's footsteps, then that is commendable. Well, even if botany is not my strongest suit, there are people who say that I could be a good manager. Thank you, young man. We shall see. Albert told us about the tragic death of Mr. Dunn, the late director of Kew Gardens. Tragic indeed. His heart attack was quite unexpected. Would you unlock the doors for us? Do you expect to find the stolen plants there? I am sorry, but those rooms are private. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. This sign is broken. Something heavy was dropped upon it. Blood. Someone fell violently against this sign. All the clues around here are quite...
This reconstruction reveals a disturbing fact. Montague Dunn damaged the door of the colonial collection room. He was in a panic, or the door was locked. Was it an accident, or a murder then, I wonder? Excuse me, but I... That is not the one. Here it is. That is not the one I need. Here it is. The Divine Syndicate is not a supplier to Q. Here it is. My archive. I can always... I asked Inspector Lestrade to take Montague Dunn's body to Scotland Yard. It's ready for autopsy then. A membership card for the... This watch is... A beautiful... F First of all, let us carry out an external examination. The vessels and the... There is an injury to the skull. The air from the lung. Nothing sus... No redness. There are no suspicious... Now, let us... Ex The heart's blood vessel. The heart tissue. The lungs are congested. The tissue on the inferior lobe of the... The liver. 
The liver tissue is... The stomach tissue... There is a small amount of... My suspicions have been substantiated. Montague Dunn, the director of Kew Gardens, died from poisoning. Plant poisoning, to be more exact. You mean... Yes, it is murder. We should inform Lestrade. Yes, but do remember, Watson, that I discovered the murder. The challenge is mine. The challenge, Holmes? We need to locate that deadly plant. Such a perfect murder appeals to me. Murder of any kind appeals to you. Is that all we need to do? No. We also have the people working at Kew Gardens. Martin Hamish and the son of the victim, Albert Dunn. And also Miss White, of whom we spoke with Mr. Hamish. Should we bring them all here for interrogation? No. A few innocuous questions at Kew will suffice, as well as a discreet delve into their personal affairs. Yes, Watson. It is time now to open the doors. Even those in the staff building? I suppose that is necessary. We should also be concerned with the victim himself. After all, we don't know very much about Montague Dunn. You're enjoying this already, aren't you? <laughs> More than a little. Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the Colonial Collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the Deputy Director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. As Deputy Director, how was your relationship with Montague done? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that, if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so. And I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work. And his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here. And he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Are you able to elaborate on that? Well, for example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. 
That must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. You mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he... why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert, Mr. Dunn's son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now, all of a sudden, he is trying to act as if he owns the place. I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah. At the moment, I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man, for he never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I've been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the deputy director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the deputy director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honor of being the garden's longest serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew Gardens, and I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. But my father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. Dismissively. With indifference. Tell me, have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Locked. A photograph of Montague Dunn and Reynold Hamish.
Newspapers discussing Kew Gardens. Champagne. Montague Dunn had good taste. French wine. A remarkable vintage. I suggest that we don't tell Miss Margaret White about this document. Just be careful with the plant. It appears as though the protective equipment is missing from here. Gloves, waterproof aprons, everything one might need for self-protection. Do they grow dangerous plants here? Such masks are generally worn when dealing with toxic chemicals. Lock. Holmes, Albert Dunn didn't give us the key to this door. It does not matter. We will open it.
open. A botany book. This student's book belongs to Albert. Chemicals, a sufficient quantity for some serious experiments. A phonograph used for voice recording, remarkable. Yes, this is quite a modern laboratory. I don't hear anything. and Hamish. This is a table for experiments. It resembles my own. Only this one is kept in good order, Holmes. The gold is almost immune to chemical attacks, so it may be a valuable auxiliary for various experiments. But why would anyone perform such experiments in a botanical garden? There was a bottle here. It left behind a trace of the substance that pervaded the laboratory. Several drops of the substance were spilled. Someone carried this bottle around. Several drops of the substance. The bottle is no longer here, but it is possible to detect a faint scent. We need a good nose. Martin Hamish's locker. Father and I, Kew Gardens. A review on rare and exotic plants. Martin Hamish has written several pieces. Martin Hamish studied chemistry. Interesting. Albert's Locker. Specialist articles on shipyards and ship construction. Albert Dunn has a great passion for shipbuilding and the sea. A rejection letter from the British Royal Naval College. Young Albert, standing with a woman in front of London University. Miss White's locker. A draft of the letter that Miss White sent to her parents. Apparently, Miss White is a capable student. These jewels must be worth a small fortune. A vanity purse. It is of high quality.
lock. These young plants must be delicate. A thesis written by Martin Hamish. A glasses case. It is empty. This area serves as Martin Hamish's office. We can see the interior of the colonial collection room from this window. This poster is for an exhibition that Martin Hamish was directing, but it had nothing to do with Kew Gardens. This certificate belongs to Martin Hamish. He won... A master's degree diploma. It belongs to Martin Hamish. An award presented to Martin Hamish for Best Grower of the Year. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. I am curious if the marble that we found will... Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. The seeds of plant species Locked. Open. These leather gloves are new and of good materials for college study. This place serves as Albert's office. A book about ship. From here, we are unable to. Good day to you, miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. This is my good friend, Mr. Sherlock Holmes. I am honored to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am he. What a pleasure to see you here at Kew Gardens. Are you working on a case?
Yes, a, a theft of plants that took place here a few days ago after their most recent exhibition. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. Oh, it's quite understandable that you might forget about the theft of the plants, miss, after the tragedy that took place here. Yes, the director was a truly good man. It is such a terrible misfortune. Would you happen to know why part of the colonial collection was cleared? No, I have never been there. Do you work here? Part-time only. I am a biology student at the London University. I attend the same classes as the son of Mr. Montague Dunn. That is how I found my chance to work here for part of my thesis, you see. It is a great honor. How well did you know Mr. Montague Dunn? He was a master, a great leader. I saw him almost as a spiritual father. He had an exceptional nature? Oh yes, indeed. He was always so active, and so optimistic, and very nice to me. Although, he could behave harshly towards his son. Why so? He loved his son dearly, and wanted the very best for him. It made him extremely demanding. Albert, who is naturally shy, suffered because of it. The Divine Syndicate. Does that name mean anything to you, by any chance? Not at all. But it is a very pretty name. Most of the doors in Kew Gardens are locked. Do you have a key to this room? Oh, yes. Albert gave me a set of duplicate keys. He agreed I might carry out my studies without disturbing him. It is only temporary. Thank you, miss. None of the three people who work at Kew Gardens know why half of the colonial collection was cleared. So, someone is lying. It is obvious. Here it is. And here is the Divine Syndicate's address. Perfect. Come on, Toby. We have some work for you to do. Let us go to Kew Gardens. Let us take Toby to the laboratory. He will pick up the scent of this mysterious substance. Search, Toby. Search. Congratulations, Toby. Now let us see what you have found. This is the bottle that was used in the laboratory. It was buried here. There is still some liquid remaining in the bottle with gold flakes. 
a tiny caterpillar. Not surprising to see one in a garden, but at the bottom of a bottle. I perceive that you are passionate about the Royal Navy. Passionate? No, not really. I like ships, that is all. Are you quite sure? You do not seem to be so interested in plants. It's difficult, that's all. My future is here. It has never been about anything else. And yet I know that the Royal Naval College rejected your application. Ah, oh, you truly are as clever as they say. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, my father was strongly against the idea. He did his best to ruin my plans, although I almost did succeed. But my dreams were shattered, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, young man. We shall see you again soon. Mr. Hamish, was someone from your family connected with Kew Gardens? Family? No. I'm the only one with a passion for botany. I do not think so. This photograph of you and your father at Kew Gardens suggests the opposite. Ah, but you have no right to. Do tell us more about your father. He was, indeed, the greatest botanist of his time in the British Empire. He worked together with Montague Dunn until the end of his life. He brought me in at the age of twelve. Did he get on well with Mr. Dunn? No, I couldn't say that. They expanded Kew Gardens together, that was all. And it was all my father's work, for Dunn always lived the high life. So Mr. Dunn was not helping your father? Oh, yes, he provided the financial support. And as far as he was concerned, that fulfilled his role. But the worst of it was, he declared himself as the master of Kew Gardens. Fame meant nothing to my father. So it was easy for Mr. Dunn to take all the credit. There is a bust of Montague Dunn in the nursery. A bust? Oh, that old thing. Further proof of that outrageous ego of his. But why in that room, in particular? Oh, I, I don't know. It has always been there. It is strange, because I recovered a fragment of the bust inside the colonial collection room. Really? Oh, well, so I am mistaken. It ought to have been removed during the cleanup. This room is so small. Hmm. Do you know who moved it? I have no idea. Surely Mr. Dunn requested it. Do you have any more questions like this? Because fragments of rock are not my responsibility. Evidently. <laughs>